Bring it in, big boy. Oh, we're, we're just recording a video. It's my oh. bold predictions for the year. No Every, context. Everything that I have heard from the Chargers about Quentin Johnston is that he's legit. Zay Flowers is a nightmare to cover. Honestly, you, you the, work close with the Chargers. So this That feels like a good source. He's good. He's good. People had their questions, but he's going to be just fine. Really, the rookie receiver class in general is so much better than a lot of people were anticipating. Just tell me about Michael Wilson. Play, he's a player. Stop. Stop. All right. He's ne- going to get snaps. Next. <laughs> Next. <laughs> All right. So those were uh, Brett Coleman's terrible bold predictions for the year. There was Michael Wilson attrition going on there. So maybe we'll edit that out. If not, you saw it. But my bold predictions are going to be much more friendly to Michael Wilson. Today, we're going through eight scorching hot bold predictions for the 2023 fantasy football and just football season in general. Y'all know what to do. I don't even know if it's worth tucking in at this point. Because it's about to be scorched earth in this motherfucker. First things first, we had some new merch drop. Uh, I want to give away three free t-shirts to you guys. These are extremely high quality. We now got them in medium, large, and extra large. For the thick boys out there, just drop some just drop some hot takes in the comments below, okay? All I want to know is what is your what is your spiciest take that's within realistic boundaries, okay? Don't be fucking throwing in uh, Michael Wilson outside of the top 24 wide receivers, right? That's just no way that happened. Please make them spicy, but make them kind of realistic as well, all right? Not spicy like ketchup. Grow up. Let's get into it. My first bowl prediction for the year is we're going to have three rookie tight ends finish as top 20 fantasy tight ends. Now, that might not seem that spicy, but it is so rare that we have fantasy tight ends come from the rookie class. We so rarely ever have breakout rookie most of them it takes them years to earn like a real role sometimes you have the Kyle Pitts but that's like once in every six years type of rookie year and a lot of the times even the best players like Kelsey's rookie year was a wash you have a lot of the guys that are the elite guys now they don't they don't do it as a rookie because they typically have veterans on the team in front of them and the reason I feel so strongly about Don Kincaid Luke Musgrave and Sam Laporta is this is one of the few years that these dudes have been drafted straight into situations where they're getting on the field immediately. Now, the the most talented one out of all these guys, Dalton Kincaid, is playing with Dawson Knox. So he is the only one with a veteran kind of in his way, but I am not, for whatever fucking reason, not worried about it whatsoever. Luke Musgrave has been on basically every single snap with Jordan Love throughout the preseason so far. That offense is going to be so condensed. It's Jordan Love, Watson, Dobbs, Jaden Reed, Luke Musgrave. He's being targeted. He looks good. Everything out of camp is that he is the guy there. Luke Musgrave is going to going to earn a ton of targets there. Sam Laporta, they got rid of TJ Hawkinson last year, replaced him with Sam Laporta. Really high draft capital. Right as the second round ripped off, Sam Laporta was one of the first picks off the board. He's going right into a starting position, okay? So these dudes, when you're looking for fantasy tight ends, you want guys who are going to run a ton of routes, who are going to be on the field for a ton of snaps, and these are the guys that are going to be them. Don Kincaid, he's like my tight end 10 right now, or tight end 11, I want to say. Musgrave is all the way up to like my tight end 13. Let's not overthink this, people. Let's not overthink this. Musgrave's 13. I think Laporta. Laporta's probably around like the 18, 19 range, but still, all these dudes are going to be participating in like 70% of the snaps for their team. That's what you're looking for in fantasy tight ends. Three rookie tight ends finish as top 20 fantasy tight ends. And I mentioned my rankings. Those are all available in our draft guide right now. It's got super flex, one quarterback. You can get that full price on our store, bdge.shop, but you can get it for a heavy discount if you go to underdogfantasy.com or the Underdog Fantasy app. The link down below will take you right to the app store and you deposit $10 or more with our code BDGE. And not only if you do it between now and August 28th, are they going to put a 0.5 0.5 Bijan rushing yard line on the app for you. So an easy free money square pick them on the app only for BDGE users, but you're going to get our draft guide absolutely free email to you with a deposit of $10 or more using our code. Plus they're going to double whatever you put down. All right. So quick plug to start the video off. Love you. Bold take number two, both Chris Godwin and Mike Evans go over 1000 receiving yards, which is pretty much the opposite of the way the market is treating them right now, right? The whole storyline of Mike Evans has gone for a thousand yards for a thousand straight years. Everyone thinks it's going to be over this year. 
I just think I, 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 I am weirdly higher on Baker Mayfield than everybody else is. And I think there's a chance that the Tampa Bay Bucks offense is a little bit similar to like Seattle last year where everybody underrated them because they didn't like the quarterback and they so far outproduced what their expectations were. I love Godwin this year. He got off to a slow start last year because he was coming off the ACL. He had a late ACL tear two years ago. Then he had the ACL he was dealing with all of last year. Now he's fully healthy going into the year. Their offense is going to be so condensed from a target share standpoint. They don't have a real tight end of consequence like Kate Otten. They don't have another wide receiver of consequence, consequence besides a wide receiver of consequence besides Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. They're going to eat up so many targets there. So I think both of them with a Baker Mayfield that's going to be okay. He doesn't have to go against a bunch of tough teams. Both of them go over a thousand yards this year. I think their run game is going to be atrocious. I think they're going to have to throw the ball and throw the ball and throw the ball. Contrary to Brett's awful take in the pre-video, Michael Wilson finishes as a top three rookie wide receiver. A top three fantasy rookie wide receiver. You know, you could take your pick of what other guys are going to finish where, whether it's Jordan Addison, JSN is now dealing with a semi-significant injury. Do whatever you want. But Michael Wilson is going to be on the field immediately. He is a phenomenal route runner. This team is going to be bad. They're going to be playing from behind like 90% of the time. They're going to have to throw the ball. Sure, Hollywood is out there, but he is the only dude out there catching passes. There's no other wide receiver over five foot eight, over 175 pounds. It's Michael Wilson's season. He has ran every route with the starters. He has outrun Hollywood Brown when they were playing with the starters, okay? Now, obviously, he's not going to play over Hollywood Brown like one wide receiver sets, but that doesn't fucking matter. Michael Wilson, top three fantasy rookie wide receiver this year. I don't know how, I don't know how to group this. I wanted to do another one with the Packers. I already touched on Luke Musgrave. I'm so, I'm getting so high on the Packers offense. I am bought into Jordan Love. I love that they are a condensed fantasy team where you know where the targets are all going. I wanted to make one about Aaron Jones specifically. I was going to say he is the RB1 in the NFC North again because everyone's, you know, uh, claiming Jameer Gibbs is like that guy. He's getting picked spots above Aaron Jones right now, but that's not really bold enough of a take. And then I was going to say he has more receiving yards than Jameer Gibbs and more rushing yards than David Montgomery, but I kind of want to just go down the Packers path. Let's say the Green Bay Packers have a top 12 fantasy asset at every single position this year. Jordan Love. He is probably the one I feel the most nervous about getting into the top 12 from a bowl prediction standpoint. Jordan Love's looked phenomenal. The whole team is behind him. They believe in him. And this is going to be condensed between Aaron Jones, who was a top 10 fantasy running back last year. He's going to be a problem again. This is Christian Watson's second year after coming off a phenomenal breakout. And to be honest with you, I love Romeo Dobbs too. How am I going to fit him in here? Romeo Dobbs also top 24 wide receiver. Let's throw him into the, the bold prediction as well. He's looked awesome this offseason. Scoring touchdowns in the preseason with Love. Catching deep bombs down the sideline from Love. Love it. Luke Musgrave running every single route. Jane Reed, fuck it. Wide receiver 36, top three. So we've got a top 12 QB. We've got a top 12 running back. We have three top 36 wide receivers, a wide receiver one, a wide receiver two, a wide receiver three, and a tight end one. That's what we're doing for the Packers this year. Somebody talk me off the cliff, please. And while we're talking about groupings here, the Miami Dolphins, Tyreek, Waddle, and Tua all finished top five at their respective positions. They were close to doing it last year with Hill and Waddle. I think the fact that they have another year in the offense getting that camaraderie together without adding any, they let Mike Kosicki walk and they did not add any real wide receiver of consequence to the offense. I can't tell you how heavily this offense is going to run through the pass. It's going to run through the pass and the pass runs through Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle. And I think Tua is so efficient when he gets time he is so efficient when he's healthy and he's on the field. These two are going to eat. Two is going to eat. And I also want to throw in something from the backfield, but I don't I don't know if I have a necessarily like concrete bowl prediction here, but I've been drafting a shit ton of Jeff Wilson and Raheem Mostert. Do with that as you may. You can get them in like the 12th, 13th round of basically every underdog draft, and I will not stop doing it. But I will say Miami wins that division. Maybe that's a hot take for some of you guys. The Jets got a lot of hype. Buffalo Bills are obviously an awesome team. I will say Miami wins the AFC East. That is a that is a bold prediction for you. Damian Pierce explodes for 1,500 yards from scrimmage. I was so high on him as a prospect coming into the year, coming out of college, out of Florida. By the way, I watched the um, the Untold documentary on Florida last night. Really good watch. I think they probably could have dove deeper into like 70 other situations that happened at the University of Florida, but it was really cool. It was, it was super fun watch, like four episodes, mini series. Untold on Netflix follows the University of Florida under Urban Meyer and like Tim Tebow's come up. Good shit. Damon Pierce, better shit. 
1,500 yards from scrimmage, book it. Rex Burkhead, out the way. Damian Pierce is playing on every snap so far in the preseason with the starters. Third and long, fourth and long, third and five plus, he's out there every single snap. He is going to play as much as that man can possibly handle. And I think the biggest problem with him last year was coming out of Florida. He never had a season with more than 106 carries. He was not ready to be a workhorse. They forced him into a workhorse role, and he kind of diminished towards the end of the year. Now he knows what he needed to prepare for at the NFL level in order to sustain what you sustain, the beating you get throughout an NFL football season. Now he's ready to go, and they clearly see that. This offense is going to be 100 times better than it was last year. They have upgrades on the offensive line. They have, they have upgrades to their weapons. They have an upgraded quarterback, obviously. Like Damian Pierce is going to be a boat that just rises with the tide here, and he was already really good last year. And now you got him playing more passing downs. I also just want to say he had the second most targets and receptions out of rookie running backs in the entire class last year behind Rashad White. Obviously, he would have fell behind Brees Hall, but even top three, like kind of underrated. Efficiency-wise, he was really good on passing downs coming out of Florida. Was never like super high volume, but yards per reception, yards per outrun, catch rate. Like there was nothing about his game that said he couldn't play all three downs and couldn't catch passes. So I expect that to be the case with Damian Pierce this year. I think he's like the most obvious. We're going to look back and be like, damn, we knew he was going to be a three down workhorse this year on an ascending offense. And I didn't draft him a fucking running back 24 or whatever he is right now. Hot take number seven, I guess. At this time next year, Deshaun Watson is going to be drafted as a top three fantasy QB. I have heard reports out of camp that he's not throwing the ball great, but I just don't think you have that level of elite athleticism and you just like forget how to play football I'm willing to wipe off all of last year with the fact that he was going through an in you know an insanely intense event in his life of course you're not gonna be able to focus on football when that stuff's happening in the background a year later I'm sure he's got a much different point of view on life now and is much more focused on football this time around and what I like the most is like he was running a ton in the preseason their offensive line is going to be really good the weapons around him are really really good as well if he gives you that rushing upside again where he's going for 30 40 50 yards a game on the ground I I think he's going to have a phenomenal season despite the reports of him like struggling in 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 camp so far so I'm in on Watson for sure and my eighth bowl prediction was actually Cortland Sutton outscores Jerry Judy, but like 30 minutes before I started recording this, we got word that Jerry Judy got carted off. So I actually don't know what the situation with Jerry Judy is right now, if it was something super serious, if he's going to miss a lot of time, if he's going to be out for the season, whatever it is. So I can't use that. So what do I want to pivot to? All right, fuck it. Let's show Brock Purdy some love. How about Brock Purdy is the highest scoring fantasy QB in the NFC West. So right now, Brock Purdy's going off the board as the QB 22. Actually, okay, this is not very hot. He has jumped Stafford, who's the 24. Kyler Murray's the 23, who's probably not going to play much. Geno's the QB 15. All right, whatever. Fuck it. Maybe it's not that hot, but I want some hotness of Brock Purdy sprinkled onto my fantasy team. So Brock Purdy, highest scoring fantasy quarterback in the AFC West. Maybe I could just say the highest scoring fantasy player in the AFC West because quarterbacks already score the most points, so that's not really doing much, but it helps fill the fake hot prediction here. What do we think? What do we think? Brock Purdy, highest scoring fantasy player in the AFC West this year. Okay, those are my bold predictions. I can't hold this flex any longer. My traps are going to pop. Leave your bold predictions down below in the comments. We're giving away some merch to the ones that I like the most. While you're down there, hit the button that looks like this. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And don't forget to cop the draft guide. Underdogfantasy.com. Promo code BDGE will get you 10 plus dollars doubled. And you'll get that Bijan .5 rushing yardage line after August 28th. I love you. Goodbye.